guys welcome back to my channel thank you guys for coming back anyway i hope that you guys are all doing good i love you guys and i hope that i always am praying for you and i always hope that you guys are all doing well um i'm here to talk a little bit about jesus and the standard that jesus raises in our lives so i hope that you have your notes ready and we can just get into this so john chapter 17 that was a really quick intro i'm digging it john chapter 17 verses 13 says so before we get into it i just want to give some context jesus right now is praying openly with his disciples um, concerning them, their lives, and concerning pretty much the lives of us after he dies and ascends to heaven. Because at this time, he is very close to dying and ascending. Um, and so he's speaking with his disciples in prayer um, to God. And so we're going to read verse 13. I am coming to you now, but I say these things while I am still in the world, so that they may have the full measure of my joy within them. I have given them your word. So he's saying to God, I have given us, us children of God, your word, God's word. And the world has hated them, for they are not of the world any more than I am of the world. Okay. My prayer is not that you take them out of the world, but that you protect them from, from the evil one. They are not of the world, even as I am not of it. Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into this world, I have sent them into the world. For them I sanctify myself, that they may tr they too may truly be sanctified. So when you read this scripture, what do you think about? Because personally, when I read this scripture, I see through Jesus' prayer to God that there is a strong intent, a strong mandate that we sanctify ourselves, separate ourselves from the world in order to accomplish what we would accomplish. As Jesus says, I too have sent them. Okay, so we are also on assignment. Just as God sent Jesus on assignment, we are also on assignment sent out by the Son to do things and to win souls and to basically be the, the light here on earth. And so I was really reflecting on this because he says something in verses 14. I have given them your word and the world has hated them for they are not of the world any more than I am of the world. So. Jesus literally said, we are not of the world any more than he is of the world. There's a standard that is raised um, that is comparable, com comparable, comparable to the standard Jesus kind of kept and upheld on this earth, that we are not of the world any more than Christ is of the world. However, when we speak to young people, because I'm a young person, so I'm going to speak on young people, we see that we are kind of justified in our nonsense and justified in our sin because we can no way reach the perfection of Jesus and so let Jesus be perfect let him be over there and let me kind of try my best and figure it out and repent for my sins because I can in no way you know do what Christ did and I'm not saying that we must be Christ but I'm saying that we must be in his image as much as possible we must separate ourselves from the sin and the unrighteousness and the defilement as much as possible in every area of our lives because Jesus said that we are not a part of this world as much as he is in. And Jesus wasn't out here cussing everybody out. He wasn't out here, you know, doing weed and drugs. He wasn't out here drinking a storm and being in drunkenness. He wasn't out here getting in fights. He wasn't stealing. Jesus separated himself from the standard of the world. The standard of the world is basically do what makes you happy right today the standard of the world is do what makes you happy if sex makes you happy have a lot of it if food makes you happy have a lot of it if friendship makes you happy have a lot of friends put your eggs in one basket and put a lot of your eggs in one basket whatever makes you happy do it that's the trend I'm seeing today in music in in pop culture and fashion right and so Jesus is saying that that standard of the world in terms of doing whatever makes you happy and just kind of being happy go lucky and doing whatever you want we are not supposed to adhere to that standard instead we are supposed to separate ourselves and have find the joy within that and so i think that their joy can come from being set apart and we have this mindset sometimes that yeah as young people that being set apart and living up to that standard that jesus called us to is a curse it makes you different and it makes you awkward and it makes you weird and people don't like you and people don't want to mess with you and so you don't want to be too much like Christ because then the world starts to hate you like scripture said like Jesus literally prayed to God about and so understand that that, op that oppression or the offense that people have towards you the anger that people have towards you the retaliation that people have towards you 
Jesus already knew it was gonna happen and he prayed about it. Set yourself apart, setting yourself apart is not something that's compromisable. You can't compromise on that. That was something that you, God, sorry, Jesus prayed about that you would do and set, and he said he send you out to sanct, so sanctify yourself with the truth. That is your responsibility, right? And so as young people, I'm gonna talk about girls. You know, girls, ladies out there, let me tell you something, okay? Setting yourself apart is the best thing you can do, especially if you're single and you're discerning who you're gonna be with, okay? Because when you start to compromise on your righteousness, compromise on your faith, compromise on your fervency, you know he's not the one, okay? I'm speaking candidly today. You know he's not the one because all of a sudden you start going to prayer meetings and all of a sudden you're not really praying as much and you're not really talking to God as much because you don't want to come off too spooky. You don't want to come off too intense. Let me tell you something. I love to pray and I'm not going to hold back in prayer because there's too much at stake because I know who God is for me and I know who he is for this world. I know who he is for these people out here and I reverence that in my prayer because I, I, see, I see what's at stake here and I know where my prayer is reaching and I know who I'm praying to. So you think a little boy is gonna come in here because he's fine and he's gonna come in here and he's gonna alter the way I pray before Jesus died he set a standard and said you are not of this world as much as I am not of this world I am dying for you to be able to set yourself apart I am dying for the power of the Holy Spirit to dwell in you to set you apart and aid you in in reaching the assignments and reaching your objectives and doing what you have been set on this earth to do I am dying so that the spirit of me can dwell in you and allow you to accomplish your assignment how disrespectful is it to say, because I like this boy, I will not do what you died for me to do. Because I like this girl and she is worldly and she loves love and hip hop and she loves twerking and she loves going to the strip club and I like her. So I'm going to deny my assignment and I'm not going to do what I'm supposed to do because of this person. So how disrespectful is that? Think about it. And so I encourage you all today, reverence God, reverence him in your life. Reverend, acknowledge the standard that's been set in your life that there are certain things that you just can't do anymore. Before I was, you know, dedicated to Christ and things like that, I used to watch Empire all the time. Season one, honey, <laughs> I was on it. I was watching it all the time. And as I grew and I matured spiritually and as I grew and as I grew and as I grew, I realized that I'm going to let this one go. There, there's, there's a way that I would talk to people, okay, before I was saved. A little more aggressively a little more angrily I have no patience for you and your nonsense and you're annoying and bye and I realized that the love of God is not there and so there's some things I gotta just set myself apart I gotta love even when you're annoying I gotta love even when you've offended me I gotta love I gotta just set myself apart a little bit or when you're in relationships there are certain things that you would do before you would kiss and you would touch and you would do all these things and now Something changed. I gotta set myself apart a little bit. I gotta, I gotta do something different now. There's a standard that's been raised, and that standard raises my integrity. It raises my purpose. It raises my my senses. It raises the convictions I feel. It raises it because a standard is established on your foundation. Okay, and so it's important to understand that we are have been called, and and we are going to be, and we have been sent on a different standard, on a different type of uh, instruction. And that instruction requires us to separate ourselves. And if that's not being done, I question how you can get where you wanna be if change has, changes have not been made. If you are doing the exact same things you did before you were saved, before you gave your life to Christ, before you decided to be purposeful in this walk, and you're doing the exact same things now, how are you going to get where you need to go if changes are not being made? right so i just make this video for to allow you guys to ponder on that ponder on that because a standard has been raised in your life how are you meeting that new standard how are you setting yourself apart so much so that jesus said i am not in this world as much as they are not in this world how are you doing that how are you accomplishing that once you answer those questions i think you can notice the trend and then be able to apply some sort of change in your life to get where you need to get so those are my suggestions for you all i hope that you enjoyed the video be sure to thumbs it up be sure to subscribe that's my mom Ooh, i'm not rude i'm support <laughs> she said i'm not rude i'm supportive love you guys i'll talk to you guys later
Bye. Bye. <laughs>